Now, I can do this SQL statement in my sleep. Most people, however, don't think this way. <laughs> this, is, this is beyond where they would go with, with SQL. So while it was doable, it wasn't very intuitive. And in fact, because of all the, the work that it was doing, all the extra work that it was doing, it was actually slower in most cases than my PL SQL implementation. 11G, they've made it this easy. They, they finally made it simple. There's just list ag. Of course, they couldn't call it string ag, so they called it list ag, but it does exactly the same thing. So I can now group and sort the information and get the same delimited list. Another analytic function they added, uh, they had given us row number from a long time ago. They gave us a first value. This allowed us to index around in a result set. I could break this result set up by department number, sort it by name, and I could, for any row within a department number, grab the first name that came in that set and assign it to the current row. I had the last value as well. I could break it up by department, order it by name, and I could grab the last name and associate it with the current row. Now they've made it more flexible. I can grab the nth row from a result set. So it's almost like being able to index into your result set itself. I'm not looking back a row or looking forward a row. I have functions to do that, lag and lead. This is allowing me direct access to the third row or the fourth row. And so I can build result sets with whatever sort of information I need in order to get the right answer out. Number three, an execute on a directory. In version 8.0, they introduced a new data type, the B file, for binary file. And in order to access a B file, you needed a directory object. And back then, the only privilege we had on a directory was read. You could be granted read on a directory, then you could use the B files that were in it. In 8i, they extended this so that util file would start using these directory objects as well. Uh, no, I think I misspoke. It was 9i that util file started doing this. Now I could grant read or write on a directory because util file could be used to create files as well as read existing ones. In 11G release 2, they introduce a capability to grant execute on a directory as well. This is interesting. It, it's nothing to do with B files. It's nothing to do with util file. It has everything to do, though, with external tables. External tables allow a new directive in them. An external table, for those who don't know, is the ability to use a flat file, an operating system file, as though it were a database table. You can create an external table, tell us how to read and interpret the file in the operating system, and you can select star from it. Now, you can select star from a program. You put a program into a directory, we call it a preprocessor, we're gonna run that program and pass to it the name of the operating system file the external table was created on. Instead of us reading the file, we're gonna read the output of the program run against that file. So this is pretty interesting. What I did with this first was create uh, two directory objects, one where I was gonna put my input files, one where I was gonna put my code. Then I created my external table. And this part all looks pretty normal until we get down to the line in red here preprocessor, go to the execute directory I set up, and run the script run underscore gunzip.sh. This is a script I wrote. And I'd like you to run that against this file, emp.dat.gz. What this will allow me to do is have a compressed file in the operating system and use it to load into the database without ever uncompressing the disk. I can uncompress it on the fly and feed it into the external table and load it directly into my table. So I can load that compressed file without having to uncompress it someplace else. So I have the file in the operating system. It is gzip compressed data. I have my shell script that I'm going to run against it and all it does is user bin g unzip dash c says write the output to standard output and this dollar sign star says use the file name that was passed into me. So this would do a gunzip of my compressed file and it allows me to select star from it. As soon as they give me a capability like this, I start thinking, what can I do with it that they didn't anticipate me doing with it? And I thought of other things that I've wanted in the database for a while. The ability to read a directory, for example. I want to see what files are in the directory. Util file will let me read and write it, 
but they won't let me in query what files actually exist. So what did they do? I created an external table. I'm gonna call that external table LS. It's gonna have one column in it, and it's gonna run a script called run underscore LS dot SH. Can you guess what that script does? <laughs> it does an LS on the directory associated with wherever it was located. So wherever I put that script, I'm able to now do an LS on it and just actually select star from LS. What other cool things could you do? PS, process status, what processes are running? VM stat, IO stat, whatever you want. Your own program. You have a program that reads a proprietary file format and can produce the output to standard out. You can now query that file as though it were a database table. Okay? There's a lot of potential with this particular one. Number four, recursive subquery factoring. This is an ANSI SQL replacement for ConnectBy. ConnectBy is an interesting Oracle proprietary sort of thing. I hate to use the word proprietary because people hear that word and it has such a negative connotation. But it's proprietary to Oracle because it was a really hard thing to implement. And we've had it for a long, long time. And it's only been relatively recently that other databases have been able to do this hierarchical recursive sort of query capability. Oracle version 2, the first release of Oracle, 1979, 30 years ago, had ConnectBy. That's why ConnectBy is proprietary. We predate any sort of SQL standard even existing with this particular function. So this is an ANSI SQL statement that can replace ConnectBy. It can do everything ConnectBy can do. For people new to Oracle who have been using SQL Server or DB2, this will be rather natural because this is how SQL Server and DB2 do recursive queries. However, for people like me who've been using Oracle for 22 years, this syntax is going to take a little while to get our heads around. What I want to do is output this result set. With the connect by, it's pretty standard. I would start with the king record and I'd connect by king's manager number, his employee number equals the current row's manager and so on. So coming up with the start with and the connect by, I can do pretty easy. With the recursive subquery factoring, this is the way it would work. You're always going to use the with subquery factoring to pull the query out of the main query. It's going to have a name and this is the recursive part. The query that we're defining, the query block here, emp underscore data, references itself. So that's the recursion. The subquery that will be in here will always be a union all query. This first part is very much like the SQL start with clause. What I want to do is start with every row in the employee table where manager is null. This gets the king record. We then feed that one row result set into the second query. So the second query will select from emp comma and then the king record where emp.manager equals emp data dot emp no. And that's a lot like our connect by. And so that finds everybody who works for king. That set is then fed into this recursive with clause again. And then we find everybody who works for anybody who works for king. And then that set of records is fed back in. And until eventually, there's no records output from a, from a recursive call. And that's the end of that particular connect tree. Then this line 9 is a lot like order siblings by. This orders our result set. And then we simply select star from our result set. And this gives us our, our output. So the syntax is capable of doing anything connect by can do. It can also do some interesting things like generate data with data. So that's the name of my set. We're going to start with select the number one from dual. We feed that one row into the second subquery. Select one plus one from data, the recursive part, where one is less than five. That produces a row with the number two. 